hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel so in today's video again a geography little revision thing because i have a geography test and i actually already finished the test and it i got grade nine so i feel like in today's video i want to like go through some tips with you and also letting you guys know like how i study and all that stuff so yeah let's get started so i know i've only had like two geography tests but i feel like i know like right now what to expect of these tests so i just wanted to share a bit of some tips with you so number one the number one tip is know like your command words because i actually like really like how do you say it like messed up on my command words on the first test on my first geography test anyways um even though i did get a grade nine but it was mainly because in the previous like section like all the like i would say like one two three four five six six markers i did not lose one mark but on the nine markers and 12 markers i actually lost marks and like I remember like the worst one was like basically half of the mark I basically lost so know your command words and I feel like yeah on the specification they do give you what command words mean because I remember there was one thing called evaluate and what does it actually mean evaluate and I basically just gave the advantage and disadvantage yeah sure that's great but also you need to like give your personal opinion like I think that protection for earthquakes is a really good thing to do because X, Y, Z, and that is really important. Okay, so the second tip is, well, like, how would I say this, like, case studies. Like, a lot of people, like, they try to memorize every detail of case studies. No, do not do that pick some like important things to memorize like oh like 600 people died okay that's enough move on because you're not gonna get a question on the exam saying please tell me how many people died in the i don't know like a Kathmandu earthquake or something or the nepal earthquake or the earthquake in new zealand you're not going to get questions like that you're going to get case study questions like that are worth 12 marks and in those 12 marks you can talk about anything that you know about these like these case studies and do not like strive over every detail try and memorize everything just try and memorize some things that you find easy okay so try and memorize those things that you find easy like i personally find it easy to just memorize like what day it was where it was um the location and uh what would you call it like um, how many people died um roads were blocked etc so yeah those are really helpful for me the third tip is try and find patterns try and find a pattern that you can like basically add to everything i remember that for case study questions especially for the earthquake questions one of like the things in common was you know roads and bridges they collapsed very simple you don't need to like strive over like every detail having that and then basically like developing it as in like how roads collapse would affect how like the aids would come and etc and that is basically enough for what you need to do so enough about like questions and stuff let's go on to the exact method that i use so in this video i'm if you guys are looking at it so if you're not change it back please i'm talking about some details here so i've got this binder that is basically i don't have a binder for every subject i try and condense every thing into one sheet basically so i try to like split my binder into like three subjects per one binder so that's like a lot to squish so i try to keep them bare minimum so yeah and in these notes i basically write down every 
every key detail that I need to know. So when it comes to my actual GCSEs, I don't need to like oh go through like everything and that would be just a torment. Instead, I just need to go through this binder. That way I have all of the BBC Bite Size, Seneca, um, my school book, like all the information I need into that binder. That is what should go into the binder. And then um, for flashcards, I know some people like to write every information on flashcards. Not really. I, I, I enjoy flashcards, no offence, but... You, you can't really fit every single detail to a flashcard. It just looks very bulky and stuff. So on flashcards, I just try and like write down the things I don't know. So normally at the end of the tests, like at the end of your GCSEs, you are still like going to forget like these things that you struggled with. So basically those flashcards are what help you. So yeah, like make your notes on a4 paper first and then test yourself see what you don't know and then move those things on to your flashcards that is how i use both notes and flashcards and now for like geography and for basically every revision that you do like use a range of sources use bbc bite size use seneca use your cgp textbooks and do practice questions now um how are you like everyone tells them like use a range of sources how do you use them i'm going to show you my method like this actually works for me so i would basically copy off everything from the cgp book like not everything everything but like things that i feel like are key like sometimes like they do like blah 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 blab on like quite a bit in the cgp books but just cut those things off and then basically like transfer that onto your, your a4 paper and after you've done that go to your class workbook and add any information or detail that maybe like your teacher might say is important for example i i know that my geography teacher she like uh, he like teaches us um for example, where do tropical storms happen? Like he teaches like each of these bullet points that we need to mention to get like two marks and stuff. So that are, that is some of the things you can add onto your notes later. And then for baby bite size, I like recently I haven't been really using it because I feel like CGP is already enough. But BBC bite size, if you have time double check like some of the things like make sure you get a full understanding and then after that you can move on to your like i don't know like some youtube videos or something like whatever you fancy i know for sciences i like using cognito and free science lessons those are the best like they explain it and i personally like cognito because it, it's it, it he just basically draws it out and I just find it really easy to understand and that is for videos and after you've done the videos what do you do next hmm? well then I like to go on to Seneca like I know some people don't find Seneca to be useful I completely understand like sometimes it just it uh, sometimes it is a bit useless but however I find it useful to like to qu to quiz myself I guess you can call it to quiz myself like to make sure that I've understood what the topic is about so yeah I basically do that and next thing practice questions go on to physics maths tutor um, if you have money by the CGP practice books and yeah those are basically what i do to prepare for tests so actually there's a lot to do so never never leave your test thing like too late to do this okay so that's my tip i now i have no idea which tip it is now i've completely lost track but so uh if you do have time to do like writing things i know i know like some people say like writing on paper makes you think it makes you process it but sometimes especially if you have like multiple tests on the 
on the same day and you like are warned about the test like just like two days before it and it's a really really tight like gap to like squeeze everything in so I feel like during that time you would need your computer to do stuff and I use I personally use Google Docs and recently I've been doing that because last week I basically had like four tests needing to prep and that was the most stressful thing that I've ever experienced so I basically used the Google Docs to do these stuff and it actually works out pretty fine you sometimes you can add diagrams and etc when you print it off and another great tip is like I know some people like they don't have printers at home but I feel like every school they have a printer's office and you can email that the person who's in in charge of printing and ask them to print them off for you for you because I know that my um the lady who prints like papers for our students she's really nice and I highly recommend you guys do that so I've been blabbing on for quite some time um I haven't like really put this audio into the into my like editing thing yet so I don't know how long it has been so I'm just gonna like if there's time I'm gonna let you guys listen to some music watch me do this stuff and if you have any tests good luck and thank you guys for all the support I've had for being there for subscribing and every time to see your comments it just makes my heart smile makes my day and so thank you all